documentary that came out is called What the Health. Watch it. It's really good. And basically what they're saying is uh, we need to eliminate all the processed stuff because I keep repeating, they have no benefits to us, really. They cause us to be addicted to it, uh, but they have a lot of calories. So I bring it to the spiritual side. God's food is what he created, what grows, you know, uh, on the fields, th what he created, that's his foods. And then man-made food. Uh, up to a hundred years ago, for thousands of years, uh, people ate God's food. And, but then, because the population kept growing, so they decided to industrialize, you know, the food, and, and people moved to the cities, and uh, then they didn't have time to spend planting, and so things changed drastically. Our health changed drastically also. So we need to go back to the basics uh, and learn from our ancestors and see how they lived, what kind of foods they ate. Um, so processed foods includes also, and I'm sorry if I'm going to burst your bubbles, because sometimes people s decide I'm going to be a vegetarian, and now it's, it's cool to be vegan. <laughs> All over the world you see people... It has nothing to do with religion, but is the fashion now to be vegan. So let me explain a couple things if you don't know about being a vegan. Being a vegan doesn't mean that you're healthy, because you could eat a bowl full of french fries, two bottles of Coke, and you're still a vegan. Okay, so, so vegan is you don't touch animals at all, not even honey. Nothing, no eggs, no nothing that comes from animals. No leather shoes, no leather jacket, nothing. Another thing that I see happening a lot. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, there is, some countries have an Adventist manufacturer for vegetarian food. But a lot of those foods are processed too. So, read the ingredients. So you buy Fake meat, fake sausage, fake this, fake that. Read the ingredients. They're processed. So they're loaded with chemicals. They stay in the cupboard for a long time. So what science discovered not so long ago is that, this is beautiful, every single food that God made, obviously they don't say that, but every natural food is a gift from God. It has everything that our body needs. I was blown away when, when I heard this, that f lettuce has the good fat. It has a little protein. It has vitamins. It has antioxidants. It has rice, has the good fat. It's like, what? So everything has what our body needs. If you eat a variety, you're going to have enough. So... I know it's very difficult today because you hear so many different ideas. One says you should eat eight eggs a day. Another one says you should not eat any eggs. Another one says you should uh, not eat much carbs. Others say no carbs are it. You have to eat a lot of carbs and very little protein. You get very confused. I get very confused. Which one you're going to follow? <sighs> the Bible says that it's better to obey God than man. Who created our body? Was men? No. They really don't know. They're amazed still at what they discover about our body. You know, God created this amazing machine. He knows how it functions best. So let's follow his plan. I want to challenge you to read at least those three books that I told you yesterday that this doctor, that... It is not even a Christian doctor. She uses those three books to cure her patients or even to, to improve their condition if they're not cured. Using those three books, the Ministry of Healing, Medical Ministry, we looked into yesterday, it's called Medical Ministry, and 
counsels on diets and foods. Read it. I'm going to speak freely here. Satan does not want you to read. He does not want you to learn anything about health. So you follow the crowds and you get sick. That's his plan for us to be sick and die every day. So you're fighting against him by yourself. You're never going to win. Pray and you start reading. Even if you read one page a day, that's one page a day. And your conscience is going to be turning on. You know, we need to be conscious more times during the day, not just on autopilot. So pray before you go to the supermarket. Lord, I want to honor you with what I'm going to eat and drink. Help me to make a good choice. I want to honor you with this choice. Because what's the verse? So whether we eat or drink or whatever you do it, do it all for the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Has anybody start asking questions before you put anything in your mouth, like I've been suggesting? First, is th what is this going to do to my body? Is it going to bring health or diseases? Is anybody doing that? Put your hand up. How come you guys are not doing it? What's, what's the missing? I'm sorry? <laughs> We need to start asking questions because then you become conscious. Then look in your plate, in your cup, and asking, am I honoring God with this choice? That's what the verse says. So maybe I want to suggest you take a picture or you write it in a big piece of paper, put it in your refrigerator to remind you to ask the questions, to remind you that God wants us to honor him. We, do, we eat and drink also. Now, did everybody have a chance to weigh yesterday and find out if you're tofi or fofi or obese? <laughs> How did that go? <coughs> Bad? Yes. A lot of people um, apparently want to want us to explain what the you know the values that they got mean. So Archie is going to, um, at the end, he's going to explain what the values are and what's normal, what's high, what's low, and so on. So, if, um, so yeah. That's awesome. And so I want to ask Dr. Titsi, um, maybe in a month or two months, if we can do it again, so, so they can see and be encouraged the changes that they have put in place, they can actually see it in the results. Okay? So you ask her. Because <laughs> she can do that. And we had more than 10 people purchasing the menu, so we're just uh, waiting for a volunteer to be the facilitator. It doesn't need to be somebody in the health business. Uh, it can be anybody. You're not going to be the teacher. The menu is the teacher. Each person is going to have their own menu, and they're going to read one chapter a week, and at the end of the week, come together here at the church. I don't know. You guys decide where, and then we're going to discuss what you learned, what was easy, what was difficult, pray for each other, support each other. So hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll hear good news about that. Um, so today I want to share the story, because every day I share a story, about Cristobal. Uh, like I shared with you, I don't have patience anymore because I, I don't have time. I travel the world giving lectures, so I only hear from people through email or they send me uh, videos of what happened in their life. So this happened, I think, a year and a half ago. I, I was in a Spanish-speaking church doing my lectures, and this gentleman, Cristobal, came in. I don't remember because hundreds of people, thousands of people I see, I don't, I don't remember. So he came to the lecture. It was actually just one lecture. Uh, I, I had given this in the morning, and then in the evening. He came for the evening. Um, 
six months later, I, I, I came back to Las Vegas, and the pastor of that church that he went called me for whatever reason, and then he said, have you talked to Cristobal? I said, no, I don't know who he is. He said, please, here's the number. You need to talk to him. I said, what about? He said, I'm not going to tell you, but he really wants to talk to you. Okay, so I called him. And I called him, and he said, you know, I don't even know where to start, but I want you to know that you were an instrument in God's hands to save my life. I was like, okay, <laughs> wow, tell me more. So he said that he came to the church where I was giving lectures that night, and it was his fifth time going to the church. His wife was visiting the church, and he was in serious problems with his health. Look at his size in the before picture. Uh, he was having problems, marital problems, financial problems, had uh, diabetes, and I don't remember all the, the, the health issues he had. And uh, he was also addicted to alcohol. And so his wife was, uh, his life was going down the drain really quickly. He was depressed, but he, his wife invited him to go that day, so he decided to go. He said when he, when he figured out that the lecture was going to be about health, he didn't want to stay. So he thought, I'm going to go to the bathroom, and from there I'll leave, and she will not notice. <laughs> so that's what he did. He went to the bathroom, but he said on his way out of the bathroom, I said something that God used to grab him by the throat and brought him to the first seat, and he sat there, and he heard the whole thing from beginning to end. I don't remember that. He didn't remember what I said, but whatever was said, he stayed. And he said, it's like God just opened my head, and every word that you said sunk in. And then I got your menu, and I started reading and praying and practicing. In five months... He eliminated 100 pounds. I have never seen that without the, the gastric bypass. I, I never seen it or, or any of the, the bariatric surgeries. It, that's like 50 some kilos in five months. It's unbelievable. Uh, so that's, we, we chat sometimes, that's his size now. He said, Rachel, God used you not just to save my life physically, but emotionally and spiritually. He said, my marriage is wonderful. Uh, my family and my wife and I were baptized and, and now we're serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's not me. It's not you. We're just instruments. If we allow God to use us, we just pass it on. You know, and so I'm very grateful uh, that God gave us the inspiration to put this program together to help people and uh, help them understand how our brain works, how our body works, and how he wants us to, to practice his laws of health so we can be healthy and help others. Now, today I'm going to briefly touch on this subject because I would take a week just on this subject Depression is the disease of the, de the, the, the decade, you know. Uh, so many people with depression. And to tell you the truth, for a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a psychotherapist like myself, it's very difficult to diagnose people nowadays because we have chemicals that are produced in our body naturally. And then we're, when we are ingesting all these chemicals through the foods and the drinks and the air, all these chemicals that we ingest, they fight inside. And, and, and so you, you don't know. It's very difficult to diagnose. A lot of kids with attention deficit disorder, ADD, or hyperactivity, and sometimes they're put on medication, but if the parents just cut off the sugar, and the processed foods, it'll go away. That's what we have seen. So I'm not, I'm not diagnosing people no more because I'm not treating patients, but I have some friends that are 
in the field still, and what they say is, before I diagnose your child or you, for 30 days, I want you to eat just pure food, natural food, no processed stuff. And then you're going to chart the behavior and the thinking, and we're gonna, then we're going to have a through diagnose. So it's, it's, it's getting harder and harder. Uh, depression also. But there's many causes for depression, many causes. Uh, and sometimes we don't understand. It's, it's hard to understand something that we have not lived. Uh, as I shared with you, unfortunately, in the last 10 years of my life, I lost the basis of my family. I first lost my father. Every two years, there was somebody going. I lost my father, then my husband, then my mother-in-law, then my mom, then my father-in-law. All of them gone. And thank God, I, I was very sad. I suffered, obviously. They're, they're the basis for us, you know? Uh, but I didn't get, I didn't fall in depression. I, what psychology explains is for every loss that we have, it, it's like it compounds. So, uh, an example, I lost my dad. I cried a lot because I lost my dad. Then I lost my husband. I cried for his loss and my father's loss. Then my mother-in-law. So it's like it compounds. Uh, but I didn't get depressed. But it's like the straw that broke the camel's back. Uh, three years ago, I had a friend and a mentor and uh, we were working together. I was very close to him and his wife and family. And he committed suicide. And that just took my ground. Because as a therapist, I felt that I should know how I had not perceived and seen that. And so I did fell into severe depression for six months. I, c I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to take a shower. I didn't want to eat. I, I just want to sleep and not wake up. And so it's very easy for us to judge. And I have heard people, and I know I have judged in the past people that had depression also because that's our nature. Our human nature is to judge. You know, that's, that's part of our carnal nature. But God says that he is the judge, not us. We're not to judge. So I have even heard people saying, well, then they're not a Christian, because if they're a Christian, they shouldn't be depressed. <laughs> Think again. Christians are not immune. We're not saints. The church is a hospital for sick people. So depression, don't say never, because you don't know if it could happen to any of us, any of us. And it's by God's grace Every day I would pray. I fought myself because I know better. And I knew working with patients with depression that the last thing I needed was to just give in to the depression. Again, who brings the diseases upon us? Is it God? He is not the creator of diseases. It is Satan. To destroy us. You know that depression is the number one cause of suicide in the world. So I understand now. Before I didn't, I had compassion, but I had never put on the shoes. Now I have, so I do understand. It's the joy of your heart goes away. You don't have no joy. You, you have no reason to wake up. It, 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 you, it's hard to explain. It, it, it's so... You have to pray for that person. I know every family has at least one family member that suffers depression from depression, you know. So we need to pray for that person, not judge them. Pray, help them. The last thing they want is do something. We need them to do things. So I, I would remind myself, I'll put notes on the refrigerator. Okay, I need to drink water. I need to eat. I don't feel like eating, but I need to eat because if I don't, I'm going to get worse. You know, so we just need to keep fighting. Uh, so have patience. 
And if you have nothing good to say, don't say anything to a person that is suffering from depression. The last thing they need is criticism. They don't need that. They're already criticizing themselves is, is the last thing they need. So this is just a touch on the subject. Uh, depression is a disease. It's not a fashion or a shameful thing. It is a mental health problem worldwide. 350 million people worldwide live with depression. More than 350 million. If not only, it not only affects the person living with it, but their loved ones too. Untreated depression is the number one cause of suicide. Like I said, the third leading cause of death among teenagers. That's huge. It's responsible for 850,000 deaths every year. 20% of ad adolescents who experience a mental health problem, most commonly depression or anxiety. So, is our lifestyle also doesn't help? Exercise helps a lot. So, if a loved one or you are suffering from depression, go for a walk, you know, even if you don't feel like it, or help your loved one. Go with them, you know, encourage them, pray for them. The enemy is trying to destroy them. Whoever is suffering from, they need help. Can't do it alone. So here are some of the signs. Some, there's many. Feel sad or lack of encouragement frequently. Frequent crying. Feel agitated, irritated, or anxious. Loss of interest or not enjoying life. Loss of appetite. Less energy and motivation to do things. Feel worthless, hopeless, or guilt. And you know, sometimes we don't understand why we are depressed. It doesn't need to be a death in the family. Maybe you lost a dream. Maybe you lost a job. Uh, there's many reasons. It could be a chemical imbalance, pregnancy. It could, there's many reasons. So there's not just one reason. You know, these are just some of the signs. Uh, what can you do about it, you know? Ask God for help constantly. That's that, that we need. Uh, seek professional help. Not just medical, but psychological also. Because as I said before, the medicine will help stabilize your chemicals, but it doesn't change your thinking. There is no medicine that will change your thinking. You need therapy. So it, it, this resistance, especially from men, now is better. But it's like, oh, I'm not crazy. I don't need to go to a psychologist. Ugh. When we're sick physically, we'd go to a doctor. They're, they're the specialized in, the, in, in that field. So when we're disturbed emotionally, we need help. They spent years studying human behavior, our brain, how it functions. So it's important to get the professional help. Take medicine if necessary. Follow a schedule. Keep busy. This is very helpful. So what we would give our patients that had depression or anxiety. Write down a schedule, even if it is simple. Even if you're not working. What time you're eating breakfast. What time you're going for a walk. What time you're reading. What time you're, you're brushing your teeth. So it helps you follow a, a schedule. And you don't feel like a bum that didn't do anything all day. You did something. Uh, Keep a gratitude journal. And I'm going to share that with you because this, this is very, very helpful. Uh, practice the eight natural remedies daily. Daily. And we talked about them yesterday specifically. Add other steps as you can. I just put a few because I didn't want to overwhelm you. You know, when you are depressed, you don't want to do none of these things. You don't want to talk to nobody. You just want to disappear. Uh, so it, it's very sad, you know. Unfortunately, after my husband's death, my son, he's 28 years old. He was a happy child. Always easy going. He fell into severe depression. And until today, he has not cured. Um, Sometimes he tells me, Mom, I can't wait until the way I close my eyes and I don't wake up anymore. I don't have the guts to take my life. So I'm going on with this miserable life. 
And it's very hard for me as a psychotherapist to hear and not do anything. I can't do it. Only God can do it. So we can pray and love them. That's what we can do. And that's what we need to do. And God will do the rest. Um, some of our recommendations. Uh, the gratitude. This I want to share with you because it's amazing. I've been doing this for three years, and it's so helpful. It changes your brain. Dr. Daniel Amen is a very famous psychiatrist in the world. He wrote many books. Change your brain, change your life, change your brain, change your health. Uh, many books. And he did a huge study on gratitude, and he wrote a book about it. 2,000 people, part of the study. So what he would do is, and he shows these pictures uh, on the book. He would ask the person, uh, to whoever was part of the study, to think about the things they love about life, the people they love, uh, the circumstances that they love in their life, everything that they appreciate in their life. And so then he would run, they, run them uh, on the... MRI, is, do you call MRI here? Okay. So, and take a picture of their brain. The same person, he would ask, now I want you to think about the things you do not like about your life, the people you don't like, the situations you don't like in your life. And then he would run them by the MRI again and take a picture. And that's the difference. He said, when we are on a gratitude mode, our brain is function completely. It looks like a Christmas tree, all colorful. When we are in a negative mode, the brain is shut down. It's black. It doesn't work. It doesn't see a solution. It doesn't see a way out. I mean, it's physical. It's not just a thought. Look at the picture. And this is not even a Christian person. This is how our brain works. So we have the capacity to choose. If we have negative thoughts, where are they coming from? You can stop it. But we need to become aware. You don't need to remember what I shared with you guys. Everything starts with the thought. You feed on that thought, it becomes a feeling. You feed on that feeling, it becomes a behavior. Don't let it get to be a behavior. Don't feed on that thought. Don't go with the flow. Because we, we're going to get lost. We're going to be miserable if we just let it be, feel whatever, and let our brain think whatever. Our subconscious takes over. God gave us a conscience as a filter to make choices. Is this right? This is wrong. Is this healthy? Unhealthy. Is this good? This is bad. That's our filter. We need to become more conscious throughout the days. So here's the picture. So what he recommends is for you to have a notebook, a gratitude journal, Right beside your bed, and before you get out of your bed, you write three things when you wake up, three things that you're grateful that morning. Then you go on about your day, and in the end of the day, before you lay your head on the pillow, you're going to write at least one thing, one positive thing that happened on your day. You can write as many as you want, but at least one you write that happened on that day. And it's amazing what it does, because when we are in a gratitude mode, our brain is functioning totally. They say that we don't use even 10% of our brain. But when you are in gratitude mode, you are, uh, you're using full capacity. So you're going to start the day in, a, in the best way you can when you are in a gratitude uh, state. And then when you sleep, also to help your dreams, you know, to have a good night of rest. Same thing, your brain. So they say whatever happens to us, 10% is what happens. 90% is about our attitude. You know, seriously, we can choose 
to see good things even when things when the world is falling apart. You know, if we had a car accident, we're alive. It could be much worse. You know, maybe you don't have a lot of choices with food in the house, but you still have a home. Uh, maybe you don't have a lot of hair, but you still have hair, you know? <laughs> so there's so many things that we could be grateful for and we can look. <laughs> Obviously, it has to do with our personality. My sister and I are very different, but we complete each other because she said, I wear pink glasses. And when we go places and we describe the place, my description is totally different than her description. You know, she's like, were you in the same place? <laughs> yeah. I said, well, I wear pink glasses and you wear black glasses. <laughs> so we need to come to the middle. So this is something simple to do. It doesn't cost you anything. But this will be very helpful to do a gratitude journal. It's very helpful. Uh, choose what you watch, the news, uh, the music, you know. Choose inspiring things. I already shared that with you. Chapter 2 and tap chapter 3 on our, on our manual talks about that. The world is very negative. This is Satan's domain, you know? So there's a lot more negativity than positivity. And so it, we constantly have to choose the positive because the ne negative is all around. So choose inspiring things, to watch inspiring things, to listen to inspiring things. There's so much. Today, there's no excuses. You go on YouTube and you can all day hear amazing songs and seminars and just so much. It's, there is an abundance of material. Read. Don't just let your brain control your subconscious. Just take, over. take time, you know, even if it is 15, 20 minutes. According to the Bible, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything. Not just on the good things, because the trials, they make us strong. And there's a verse in the Bible, I don't have time to go through all of this, but it says sometimes people act surprised when they're, when they're in the middle of a trial saying, why are we going through this? You know, that's part of, if you want to follow Jesus, did he, he, did he live a life without trials? No, he didn't. And the Bible says that the path to eternal life is narrow. We are going to suffer trials. We are going to have difficulties. So if your life is very easy, watch out. You might be in the wrong path. You know, that's, that's what the Bible says. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. Uh, it's funny that I'm not going to mention names, but sometimes I get stressed because we get here and the computer is not working or the projector is not working. <laughs> Yesterday I was frazzled. And then a sister shared that uh, she wanted to get here on time to watch the seminar from the beginning, but she was caught in traffic and couldn't get here in time one of the days. But... <laughs> And here I'm thinking Satan is the one here trying to put his finger on everything. And she said, actually, God answered my prayer that day because I got here and you guys were just starting. <laughs> so I thought, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> so always give thanks. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. That's in the Bible, too. The Bible is amazing. Read the book of Proverbs. There are so many wise counsels in there. The, the, the one human being that was considered the most wise of them all, King Solomon. He is the one who wrote Proverbs. Um, so now it's just recommendations. I'll repeat what I've been saying. You can buy our program, but if you don't use it and apply it, it's not going to be a benefit to you. First, you need to be on your knees and then reading every day so you're working on your conscious daily and then getting together once a week to share what you learn. Uh, there's many books that I could recommend. Psh, I'll feel every day. It, it would be, there's so much out there. This one is very interesting. Doc, Dr. Michael Greger 
He's a medical doctor. How not to die? Is this thick? I don't know if he's Christian or not. It's, this is just basic, scientific. But he writes almost many, many diseases. How not to die from diabetes? How not to die from heart attack? How not to die from this or that or the other? He's, he's so, and basically he's talking about having a healthy lifestyle. You know, he's a medical doctor, a famous medical doctor in the U.S. and many other countries. That is a great book to read. Health and Wellness. Who doesn't have this little book, Health and Wellness? Put your hand. Now she just got it. Everybody has it. Who doesn't? Put your hand up. Can, can we give it to them? Uh, put your hand up and we'll get, get to you right now. Two people. Three people. Health and Wellness. Four, five, please read it. That, it. It's no good to you to have the book and not read it. It's very little, but it's so good. And it's a good book you can buy. I don't know how much does it cost. Uh, I think uh, one pound or not even that. Buy and give to your friends, your colleagues. It's, it's really good. It's, it's not about religion. It's about health, but it talks about God and general spirituality. Health and wellness is very good. So they went to, to get it. Put your hands up so we know who doesn't have it. You're going to get it right now. But you're going to promise that you're going to eat. You're going to read it. All right. I'm grateful that this church has it. Um, There's one over there. Okay. One more. All right. Next. Who has this book, The Ministry of Healing? Who has it? The rest don't? Come on, guys. Wow. This is a great book. So I don't know if the church is going to Donate it to all, all of you guys. I don't know. But this, this is part of the three books that that doctor I told you in Brazil. That's what she reads and uses for her treatment. The Ministry of Healing. Wonderful. Science is, is proving a lot of the things she wrote more than 100 years ago. Councils on Diet and Food. It, sometimes they change the picture, the, the, the cover. Okay. So... Uh, it could be a different cover, but the name is the same. Read it, please. You're doing yourself a favor, and then you'll be teaching your kids and your grandkids and your family. This is wonderful, wonderful information. And like I said, remember what I said. Satan does not want you to read these books, okay? So you start with a prayer, asking God to help you read it. Read it and remember Oh, it all of a sudden went off. Um, the next books that I want to recommend, and, and our, our watch is not working anymore, so I don't know what time it is. Ten to, okay. Is the one that they have been uh, giving as a prize? Mind, character, and personality, there's two. The volume one and volume two is really good. And it's about the mind and how the mind works. Uh, and like I said, these books were written more than 100 years ago. It's amazing. There you go. Thank you. It's messing with me. <laughs> uh, should I use the clicker? Yeah. Okay, all right. So this is very good. I recommend. Take pictures if you need to. Put it in your library. Read it. I'll let you take pictures. We're just about done. We're going to end in time. So those are just some of the books. There's many. But as you start reading and praying, you're not going to buy 
by yourself be able to read this. You know, you, you need to pray and ask God to help you read it. Um, oh, sorry. Many, many lectures. I'm sure you heard about Dr. About Dr. Neil Nedley. He has created a very famous program for depression. Actually, uh, the Harvard University in the US, one of the best universities in the world, like Oxford, Cambridge, they have done studies with this program, the depression program. The results are amazing. They send students there as a 10-day program. And you can also buy the program is, uh, to do it at home. Obviously, if you go to the Weimar Institute, it's a lifestyle center. They, you, the Weimar Institute is, they practice the eight natural remedies, or the God's remedies, and, but they have Dr. Nedley doing lectures every night there too for the depression group. It's really good. So get online and watch his uh, seminars, free YouTube. Dr. Barbara O'Neill is a medical doctor. Have you guys seen any of her lectures? Really good. Um, and you know, I want to say something that comes from the Bible. Sometimes we hear some lectures and we don't agree with everything. So instead of discarding everything, take what is good and throw away what you, what you feel is, is not, not right. Okay? I wouldn't finish college if I was going to say, oh, I'm going to take everything or nothing. Because psychology, there's a lot of things that you have to be an atheist. And, and it's like, okay, well, I don't need to believe that way. <laughs> so I'll take what is good. You know, Dr. David DeRose. Anybody saw him before in, the, in lectures? So there's many. I mean, I would spend all night here putting up pictures. So you start searching. You know, you start listening. Praying so you have the discernment. Because if you hear something that goes against what God teaches in his word and in the books he inspired. We believe Ellen White was inspired by God. There's no other way she could write the things she wrote. And, and even scholars say that. She, she didn't go to college. And it was 100 and almost 150 years ago, you know. And now here you can take a picture because it took me a while to put this this together, this list, there's two pages, lifestyle centers in Europe. Okay, I put the, the phone number and the website and the name. England, Scotland, there are two, Norway, Germany, Portugal. Uh, like I said, if I were you, at least once a year, I would, th this would be part of my vacation. Spend a week on a, on a lifestyle center. It'll be a tremendous blessing. You see. Uh, can I go to the next page? There's some people taking pictures too. Okay. Austria, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Ukraine. And some of these countries, Romania is very cheap because your money is worth a lot of money there. Uh, so, you check it out. And they speak English. <laughs> Are we good? Okay. Movies. Take a picture. Go on YouTube. Super size me. Fat up. Fat, sick, and nearly dead. That's a great one. Food Inc. Way beyond weight. Forks over knives. Cowspiracy. There's many more. This is just, uh, but once once you watch you watch one of them on YouTube, then it'll say those that watch this have watched this also. So you keep watching. Just keep watching. You're gonna find many. <laughs> if you did it once a week, boy, it'll be great. Uh, are we good? All right, Do you, did you wanna take a pic? Yeah. So, the challenge, we're just finishing. Um, our challenge, learn to eat to live and not live to eat. If you're eating all the time, snacking, 
you're living to eat. Then you're going to be tofi or fofi or obese. So I hope my prayer is that I did not offend anybody. I include myself in everything that I shared with you because I was almost obese inside. So sometimes people that are obese, they feel ashamed and uh, sometimes uh, they feel like, well, I don't want to hear what they have to say. Uh, like I said from the beginning, there is not one different than the other here. Maybe on the outside, but maybe on the inside we're all the same because I was just about obese. Didn't know it. So let's not judge because we don't know what that person is going through. We have no idea. You know, sometimes we, when we see a heavy person, we think, oh, that person is eating so much. A lot of people think that. You don't know that. I shared there's so many causes of obesity, you know. Uh, it could be I had some patients that the problem was not what they were eating. But because they were not eating, they were eating maybe once a day. It was not enough. When we skip meals, our body holds on to the fat. So we don't know. It is not our place to judge nobody. Nobody. So let's ask God to help us. Help us not to judge and pray because we're on the same boat. Remember what I said. We're all addicts, different forms, but we're all addicts. If you don't take care of your health today, you have to take care of your diseases tomorrow. I hope this is ingraining in your brain. The diseases will come for sure. I'm a living witness. And many of you already have diseases. Because you're eating whatever, like me, thinking, oh, it's not going to affect me. It's okay because I love it. I, I mean, even my dad. My dad, he had a heart attack. He did not take care of his health at all. And then the, the surgeon said, you, you're not going to be able to eat me. They cut the meat out. Just no more meat. And then he was pre-diabetic, and, and he ate a lot of sweets. Sweet things, you, see, you guys, sweet serious candy. Uh, sweet toot, yeah, I, I took after him. And so they said, no more cakes for you. And he literally said, I'd rather die because there's nothing left for me. That, that, so if I cannot eat cake, then what am I going to do? It's like, Dad, come on. But for him, it was, he loved the cake. And so he, unfortunately, he died he, younger than... He should, you know, because he was eating whatever he wanted without considering what that was doing to the body. Uh, remember the tofi? Thin outside, fat inside. Before you judge anybody that has a weight problem, figure out if you're not tofi. And even if you are, or you're not, you, they have no business judging, you know? So let's stop this negative thinking of judging others. We, we, we need to be thinking about what we're doing here and be conscious about it. So what does tofi means? Yeah. So there are two pictures, a healthy one and a tofi one. <laughs> Just so we understand. What is more important, your health or your desires? I've been repeating this every day. So I'm hoping that a neural pathway has been created in your brain, and I hope you continue to say these things so it will grow to be a thick neural pathway in your brain, and you start taking better care of your health. To have victory over any addiction, we need to be on our knees. There is no other way. I hope you're praying. I hope you start praying this week is specifically for your health and for changing your habits, your lifestyle habits, not just the eating, the exercising, sleeping. That's a hard one. I fight with it until today to go to bed earlier because I have so much. I could work 24 hours a day, but there's time for everything. And you say, okay, stop. If I sleep earlier, I will get up earlier and I'll have much more energy but it's so hard. Again, who are we fighting? You know, first we're fighting our enemies. Secondly, our neural pathways that are there for how many years? 
We need God to, to change that. So I end with this quote. It's pretty, pretty deep and strong. The controlling power of appetite will prove to be the ruin of thousands, I would say millions, when if they had conquered on this point, they would have had the moral power to gain the victory over every other temptation of Satan. Let me translate it to you. What she's saying here is that if you and I, by God's grace, conquer our, our distorted, diseased appetite, we could have victory over every temptation of Satan. She didn't say some or many, every other, every one of them. And if you read this pages, you continue to read, you're going to see what she says. It's amazing. It's Satan's plan from the beginning of humanity. In the Garden of Eden, he used our appetite, and he continually does that. Today, more than ever. And he's having victory over our lives, many of our lives. He had in my life for so long. I don't want him to have victory no more. So today, I don't eat whatever. You know, but God changes our palate. We need him to change. I cannot do it myself. He changes. If you ask, he will change it. So I finish with the same verse we started. Let's say it together. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. May God bless you. It's been an honor to be here with you this week and share. Like I said, I could be here a month sharing 15 years of experience. But I hope that this week is enough to get you started and keep going. And keep going and don't stop and don't look back. And no matter how many times you fall, you get up and you keep going. You know, Satan is going to tempt you to fall back and to go back to old patterns because that is his expertise. He'll tempt us until we fall and then he'll throw in our face. Forget about it. You don't need to be doing this because you don't have the strength anyways. Whatever, you're not sick, so you just eat whatever you like. It's all about uh, pleasure. And if it feels good, do it. That'll destroy us. That will destroy us. Temperance. Eliminating the things that cause us harm. And having balance on the things that are healthy for us. So God bless you. I hope I see you again. God willing, I'll be back in next year in September. But I don't know that I'll come back to Bradford. Because there's many other churches that need to hear this message. So... If I don't see you here, I hope I see you up there soon. God bless you.